Well, a NASA, NASA official has speculated that humans could soon live on the moon for extended periods of time within decades. It follows the successful launch of the Artemis rocket last week, paving the way for the future lunar travel. So could we soon be calling space home? Let's speak to the science broadcaster and astronomer Mark Thompson, who joins us this morning. Good morning to you. Um, look, lots of people very excited about this, and it certainly seems as though, in terms of technology, in terms of scientific ambition, this is a big step forward. But there are... Uh, there is a whole swathe of the, of the population, people who are going through a cost of living crisis, people are looking at what's been discussed at COP27, going, really? Is this what we're spending all our money on? Where do you stand in the debate? Do you know what? It's really different, isn't it? If I, th I think if I thought that the, the world's problems could be solved by stopping space exploration, then I'd be the first one to be lobbying NASA and other space agencies to say, do you know what? We shouldn't be spending this money. Let's put it to other places. But... I just don't think throwing money at the problems, even the cost of living issues, I just don't think that's going to solve the problem. I think it's political issues that are going to be able to fix that first. But, you know, we're a species have always explored um, and space is one of those areas we still will have that drive to explore for the future. Is this about um, mineral exploration? Is it about forming a base to jump onto Mars? Or could it be used for things like, I don't know, exotic staycations on the moon? Weekends in the away. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think initially, you know, we, we're certainly not going to the moon with the intention simply of, of depleting all its natural resources. The, the, the real drive for getting to the moon is to explore the rest of the solar system for humans to get out there in space. Um, it, it costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of energy to launch out into space from the Earth because the Earth has got a massive, great um, call it gravitational well. There's a great big pull of gravity that tries to keep things stuck to the Earth. Um, and it takes big, powerful rockets to get out into space. So if we can establish a base on the moon, then that means that we can use that as a bit of a staging point to get out to the rest of the solar system, to Mars. Um, it opens up a sort of a gateway to exploration, human exploration. So I think, you know, it's, it's the important next step to get humans out into the solar system. But unfortunately, much as I'd love the thought of going off to the moon for um, a bit of a lunar holiday, I think that's a little bit off in the future. I think we're looking probably at the next 10, 15, 20 years to get uh, a fairly significantly established lunar base for astronauts to work on the surface of the moon. But hotels, I think they're probably going to be quite a little way off yet. Um, so just talk us through, um, you know, the timeline, really, because just this week, uh, last week, sorry, Artemis 1 launched during our show. So we would, took that live and it was really exciting. But it had been much delayed, hadn't it, due to weather and a number of technical problems along the way. So it seems as though it is still quite a precarious thing to send people up into space. So how realistic is it that I think what's the ambition? Three, four years time that that will be a, a manned rocket. And then they're going to build this sort of revolving train station, if you like, sort of platform outside <laughs> Uh, the moon, where people can hop off and then do these moon landings. And just talk us through the likelihood of that happening in the timeline, if you will. Yes, yeah, it's like, it's like a, an extreme platform nine and three quarters, really, isn't it? It's, it, it's, it's quite feasible, absolutely, that we'll get people back on the surface of the moon or back in lunar orbit within the next decade. Um, you know, it, it is still a precarious um subject a, a task to get people out into space you know we talk rockets are big complex pieces of machinery and they sometimes go wrong the weather um is a complex beast and it sometimes does things that we don't like um and aren't conducive to sending rockets out into space so it's always going to be a, a hit and miss thing to be able to get rockets out into space um even though we understand the technology and the the, the science very very well now um but yeah we will get people back in the moon on the moon or around the moon within the next 10 years 10 20 years um, I think the Artemis project is the perfect stepping stone. The next, the next goal is to get people on board the next Artemis rocket to get people to land on the surface of the moon again since the Apollo missions back in the 60s and 70s. Um, and if we don't do that, then we never are going to get there. So it's really critical that we do make these next steps. OK, um, so how, how realistic is it that somebody like Elon Musk is going to be using this as a kind of portfolio extension? Because, I mean, let's face it, the people who are, can afford to do all this are billionaires like him. Um, is this a sort of land grab by billionaires that can take us on to things like, you know, um, you know the Mars exploration later on? Or, or is, is, this, is this purely scientific or is it going to be driven by private equity? I, do you know, I, th I think it's probably... The, the exploration element, I think, absolutely will be driven by organisations like NASA, 
European Space Agency. Uh, you know, there's, there is a great drive. You know, there's nothing that can beat having a human being, scientist, engineer on the ground on another planet, on another world. Getting sending rovers to Mars is brilliant, but nothing beats a human being being there to to properly explore and to research. And you know, robots are great and they do a fabulous job. It takes all, a lot of the risk out. Um, but but we do need to get people at these places to properly explore it. So I think it's really important that we do that. I think ultimately uh, corporate organisations like the Elon Musk of the world will certainly get their foot in the door at some point, not not to, you know, to, to take ownership because there's an international agreement that says no one can take ownership of any planet or uh, or celestial body. So that's, you know, that's kind of covered politically. Um, but absolutely, there'll be people... Uh, that will soon jump on the bandwagon and try and get their foot in the door to commercialise space exploration at some point in the future. Already seen, you can buy uh, a trip out into space for like half a million dollars, which is a ridiculous amount of money. Um, so if, eventually, it will happen. It will start off as uh, just something the rich will be able to afford, but eventually, in probably a few, dare I say, centuries, it will, eventually the price will come down and we'll, be able, we'll, be, we'll all be able to go off uh, on our holidays to uh, to the moon or Mars. Uh, and yes or no, would you would you accept a freebie if you got given a golden ticket? I would, but I'd be scared silly and I'd be screaming all the way up, I think. <laughs> <laughs> would you accept one? I absolutely would. I'm a bit tall to be an astronaut. It's a bit better oh, if you're really? a bit smaller. Oh, really? Do you have to be sort of yeah, miniature? Like oh, a jockey. Well, probably rules me out as well. Yeah. Uh, Mark Thompson, really good to get your thoughts this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, science broadcaster and Thank astronomer you. talking about whether or not we could live on the moon in the next decade. Not for me, keeping my feet firmly on terra firma. Well, that was super, really interesting. Hmm.